You know, people often ask me how I managed to understand so many different things. Physics, mathematics, biology, even safe cracking and bongo drums. They assume there must be some kind of trick to it, some natural talent I was born with. But that's not really true. The truth is much simpler and perhaps more useful. I learned how to learn. And once you know how to learn, everything becomes possible. Let me tell you about something that happened when I was working at Los Alamos during the war. We had all these brilliant people, some of the greatest minds in physics, and we were all working on this enormous problem. One day, I was sitting in the cafeteria with some colleagues, and they were discussing a particular aspect of neutron diffusion. The conversation was full of complex equations and technical terms, and I noticed that while everyone was nodding along, I had this uncomfortable feeling that I didn't really understand what we were talking about. Not deeply, anyway. Now, I could have just stayed quiet and pretended to understand. That's what most people do. But I had learned something important years before, something my father taught me when I was just a boy. He taught me that knowing the name of something is not the same as knowing something. And that distinction changed everything for me. My father used to take me on walks in the Catskill Mountains. He wasn't a scientist, he was in the uniform business, but he had this wonderful way of looking at the world. We'd see a bird, and he'd say, you see that bird? In German, it's called a fail storch. In Chinese, they call it a Chung Ling. In Japanese, a Katakataka. You can know all those names in every language in the world, but when you're done, you'll know absolutely nothing about the bird. You'll only know about people in different places and what they call a bird. Now, he'd say, that bird is a brown-throated thrush, and it's singing because it's defending its territory or attracting a mate. When it moves like that, it's looking for insects. That's beginning to know something. This lesson stuck with me, really stuck because I realized that most of what we call knowledge is actually just familiarity with labels. We mistake the map for the territory. We think because we can name something, we understand it. But understanding is something else entirely. So back to that cafeteria at Los Alamos. When I felt that uncomfortable sensation of not really understanding, I did what I always do. I went back to my room, took out some paper, and I started to work through the problem myself. Not by memorizing what the others had said, but by trying to explain it to myself from scratch as if I were teaching it to someone who knew nothing about physics. I wrote, okay, what is neutron diffusion really about? What's actually happening? And then I tried to explain it in the simplest possible terms. Not using the fancy equations first, those would come later, but using plain language. I imagined I was explaining it to someone like my father, someone intelligent, but without technical training. And here's what happened. I got stuck. I couldn't explain it simply because I didn't understand it well enough. There were gaps in my knowledge that I had been papering over with technical jargon. So I went back to the basic principle. I looked at what I did understand solidly, and I built up from there, piece by piece, always checking. Can I explain this simply? Does this make sense? When I finally could explain it in simple terms, something magical happened. I understood it better than I had before, much better. And more than that, I could see connections to other things I knew. I could see where the equations came from, what they really meant, why they had to be that way and not some other way. This became my method. Whenever I needed to learn something, anything, I would follow this same process. I'd take a blank piece of paper and I'd write at the top, what is? And then whatever concept I was trying to understand. Then I'd try to explain it as if I were teaching it to someone bright but completely unfamiliar with the subject. The key is that you can't fool yourself when you do this. You can fool yourself in a lot of ways. You can memorize equations. You can learn to manipulate symbols. You can even get the right answers on tests. But when you try to explain something in plain language, the truth comes out. If you can't explain it simply, you don't really understand it. And let me be clear about what I mean by simply. I don't mean dumbing it down or being imprecise. I mean stripping away the unnecessary complexity, the jargon that we use to hide our lack of understanding. Einstein once said something about this, that you should be able to explain your theory to a barmaid. People laughed at that, but he was right. If you truly understand something, you can explain it in everyday language. The complexity should be in the idea itself, not in the words you use to describe it. I remember when I was trying to understand quantum electrodynamics after the war. This was a field in crisis. The theory made ridiculous predictions, infinities everywhere. People were stuck. I was stuck too, at first. I knew the mathematical machinery, sure, but I didn't really understand what was happening physically. So I started over. I got a notebook and I began to explain it to myself from the beginning. An electron moves from point A to point B. What really happens? I drew pictures, simple pictures, little arrows and lines. I didn't start with the Lagrangian formalism or the canonical approach. I started with, what is the simplest way to think about this? And you know what I discovered? All that fancy machinery that everyone was using, it was obscuring something much simpler underneath. By forcing myself to explain it simply, by using these little pictures I drew, 
I found a different way to do the calculations, a way that made sense to me physically. Those simple pictures eventually became what people call Feynman diagrams, and they helped solve some of the problems that had everyone confused. But here's what I want you to understand. The diagrams weren't the point. The point was the process of simplification, of explanation, of getting down to what's really happening. The diagrams were just a tool that came out of trying to understand clearly. Now, you might think this approach would be slow, and in one sense it is. It takes longer to really understand something this way than to just memorize formulas or to accept what authorities tell you. But in another sense, it's much faster. Because when you truly understand something, when you can explain it simply and clearly, you never forget it. It becomes part of how you think, and you can use it to understand new things. Because you're not just carrying around a bag of disconnected facts and formulas. You're carrying around principles that you understand deeply. I saw this when I taught at Caltech. Students would come to my office hours frustrated because they couldn't solve a problem. They'd show me pages of equations they'd written. Look, they'd say, I know the formula. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I can't get the answer. And I'd ask them, what's the problem about? Physically, what's happening? Often, they couldn't tell me. They could write down the equation for conservation of energy, but they couldn't explain what energy conservation actually means. They could manipulate the symbol, but they didn't understand what the symbols represented. So I'd say, forget the equations for a moment. Tell me in words what's happening in this problem. And we'd talk through it. A ball is rolling down a hill. What does that mean? It means it's losing potential energy. Where does that energy go? Into kinetic energy, into movement. How much? Well, it depends on the height of the hill and the mass of the ball. Once they understood it that way, the equations weren't mysterious anymore. The equations were just a precise way of writing down what they already understood. They became tools instead of obstacles. This is what I mean by learning, not memorization, not symbol manipulation, understanding. There's another part to this, though, something equally important. When you explain something to yourself this way, you discover what you don't know. You find the boundaries of your understanding, and that's incredibly valuable. Most people avoid these boundaries. They stay in the safe zone of what they already know, or they pretend the boundaries aren't there. But the boundaries are where all the interesting stuff is. That's where learning happens. That's where the adventure begins. I remember reading about biology later in my life. I was curious about it, but I didn't have the years of background that a professional biologist would have. So I'd read a paper, and I'd come across something like the Krebs cycle. And I'd think, do I really know what that is? So I'd stop and I'd get a piece of paper and I'd try to explain the Krebs cycle to myself. What is it? Why does it happen? What's the purpose? And I'd get stuck on some step. I didn't understand why this molecule becomes that molecule. So I'd look it up. I'd read more carefully. I'd draw it out. And gradually, piece by piece, I'd build up my understanding. The beautiful thing about this method is that it works for anything. Physics, mathematics, biology, history, philosophy, it doesn't matter. The principle is the same. Take an idea and explain it to yourself simply. Find the gaps, fill them in, build from solid ground. And here's something else I discovered. When you learn this way, you often find that the experts don't understand things as well as you thought. You find inconsistencies in their explanations. You find gaps in the standard way of teaching things. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes you find a better way to think about something, a clearer way, because you refuse to accept confusion. I'm not saying this to criticize experts. I'm saying it because it's liberating. You don't have to wait for someone else to explain things perfectly. You don't have to feel inadequate because a textbook confuses you. Sometimes a textbook is just poorly written. Sometimes even the experts are confused. Your job is to understand for yourself in your own way. Of course, you have to be honest with yourself, brutally honest. You can't fake understanding. When you try to explain something and you realize you're just using circular definitions or you're hand waving over the hard parts, you have to stop and admit, I don't actually get this yet. That's okay. That's good, actually, because now you know what you need to work on. You've turned a vague feeling of confusion into a specific question, and specific questions can be answered. I think one reason many people struggle to learn new things as they get older is not because their minds are less capable, that's mostly nonsense, but because they become less willing to admit confusion. They have identities as knowledgeable people, as experts in their fields, and it's uncomfortable to feel like a beginner again. So they stay on familiar ground. But learning requires that beginner's mind. It requires being willing to say, I don't understand this yet, but I'm going to figure it out. No shame in that, no embarrassment, just curiosity and determination. When I was at Los Alamos, Hans Bethe was there, brilliant physicist, one of the best. And I noticed something about him. Whenever someone explained a new idea to him, he wouldn't just nod and accept it. He'd work through it himself, right there. 
often asking questions that seemed almost naive. Wait, why does that follow? I don't see how you've got from this step to that step. But those naive questions often revealed that the person explaining hadn't really thought it through properly. Bet taught me that real understanding means being able to answer the simple question, the fundamental why question. If you can't answer those, you're building on sand. So here's what I learned and what I've tried to practice throughout my life. Learning is not about accumulating information. It's not about being able to recite facts or manipulate symbols. Learning is about building a structure of understanding, brick by brick, where each brick is solid and you know why it's where it is. You start with what you understand clearly. You expand from there, always checking. Can I explain this simply? Does this make sense? When you hit something, you can't explain simply. That's not a failure, that's a discovery. You found the edge of your understanding. Now you can work on extending it. And you know what happens when you learn this way? You become independent. You don't need to rely on authorities or textbooks or experts to tell you what's true. You can figure things out yourself. You develop judgment. You can tell when someone is explaining something clearly and when they're hiding behind jargon. You can tell when you really understand something and when you're fooling yourself. This independence of mind, that's the real value. Not just the specific things you learn, but the ability to learn anything. The confidence that comes from knowing you can take any subject, no matter how complex or unfamiliar, and gradually make sense of it. There's a freedom in this. You're not trapped by your past education or lack of it. You're not limited by what subjects you studied in school. If you want to understand something, really understand it, you can. It might take time. It might take effort. But it's possible. I've watched people talk themselves out of learning things because they think they're not good at math or not a science person or whatever story they've told themselves. But those are just stories. If you're willing to start simple, admit confusion, and work through things step by step, you can understand anything. I think about my father's lesson with the bird. All those fancy names and all those languages, they're easy to collect. You can fill your head with them. You can impress people at parties, but they're empty. Real knowledge is different. Real knowledge is understanding what the bird is doing and why. Real knowledge lets you make predictions, see connections, understand how things work. And the beautiful thing is, anyone can do this. You don't need to be specially gifted. You don't need advanced degrees. You just need curiosity, honesty, and patience. You need to be willing to start simple, to admit confusion, to work through things step by step. I've spent my whole life trying to understand things, and I'm still doing it. There's always more to learn, more to figure out. And every time I sit down with a piece of paper and try to explain something to myself, I'm using the same method I developed as a young man. It never gets old because understanding never gets old. The pleasure of figuring something out, of seeing clearly what was once murky, that never diminishes. So if there's a secret to learning anything fast, it's this. Don't try to go fast, try to go deep. Try to really understand. Explain it simply. Find the gaps, fill them in. Build on solid ground. The speed comes naturally when your foundation is strong. What looks like slow, careful work at the beginning becomes rapid progress later because you're not constantly backtracking to fix misunderstandings or re-memorizing things you never really grasped. And remember, the goal isn't to know more than other people or to be clever or to impress anyone. The goal is to see clearly, to understand truly. Everything else, the success, the recognition, the ability to solve difficult problems, that all comes as a byproduct of genuine understanding. Chase understanding and the rest takes care of itself. That's what I learned anyway. And it served me pretty well.